Ayo, welcome to episode 10 of Create This Book by Mariah Elizabeth and Ashley Monet. Ava, will be me. An exciting little note this week. I've said before that I planned these episodes out so that I finish all three books at the same time. Well, okay, like within a week of each other. The point is every book has the same number of episodes, which is 27. Well, now that we have completed nine episodes in each of the books, we can officially say we are a third of the way finished with all of the Create This books. That's crazy. It feels like we have done so, so much, and yet there's still so, so much more to do. For this week's episode, we have four prompts to tackle. So enough of me talking. Let's jump right in and see what I can create. For the first prompt of the week, create a page of quotes. Fill this page with inspirational quotes. Ugh, these prompts are just not my bag. I'm not real deep. I just don't get moved by profound words of wisdom enough to really live my life by inspirational quotes. But hey, I'm going to try today. For you guys, I'll give it a try. Baby steps, though. Let's start by making the page real pretty. That I can do. I wanted to make the background very colorful. Pretty much the whole rainbow would be represented. I wanted everything to have a loose and blended look to it, so I opted to use watercolor. And while yes, the pages of this book are not ideal for watercolor, if you keep it pretty bold and not too watery, the bleed through actually isn't that bad. Not gonna lie, I was loving the look of all these colors. It's like a tie-dye explosion. And now for the quote I have chosen. Yes, quote, singular. I know it says fill the page with quotes, but one is all I have the capacity for. <laughs> time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time by Martha Trolley Curtin. I want to splatter some paint all over the page because you see this quote makes me think of my art. Some people from the outside looking in might see it as a waste of time. I mean, it's not really paying the bills yet. <laughs> and it consumes a huge portion of my time. But the art itself, well, that part feels effortless. I get lost in it, and I haven't felt so mentally balanced in a long, long time. So if you ask me, or anyone close to me, it's time well spent. Point being, if you enjoy making art, or heck, even just vegging out on the couch, don't let someone tell you that doing what you love is a waste of time. Let's pull this tape. There's always a breach or two. Let's clean those up. And I like the look of the words placed separately. If that sounds confusing, you'll see what I mean. Let's just cut them up really quick. And now we can glue them in the book and give them a nice outline to make them really pop. I want to make the lines a little sloppy for that kind of edgy, messy look. Now this side needed some art to jazz it up. I came up with this idea of an hourglass to represent time. But because I wanted to incorporate the theme of art, I made the frame out of paintbrushes. And instead of sand inside, we'll have a squeezed tube of paint. Yes. And now for my favorite part, juicy highlight time. I did feel like the drawing needed to stand out a little more against the background. So I went back through and thickened up some of those outlines and added a few shaded areas for depth a little fine lining detail now. And to really punch it up, some metallic gold gel pen. I mean, why not? Ooh, I love how that looks. Now I need to go back in with even more highlights. I was really trying to get this to stand out on that background. Ooh, and some sparkles for the paint. Also, decided to go back and make the paintbrushes fully gold. That looks much better. One last little bit of shading with some colored pencil. Sign and date. And that's that for my inspirational quote. I'm actually super happy with this one. I am nuts about the background. And the hourglass was a fun idea. If the rest of the prompts go half as well as this one, I'll be in pretty good shape. So let's press on to the next prompt. Create a fabric page. Attach a piece of fabric or bits of fabric to this page. Now see, I told you that bleed through was not so bad. We'll easily be able to get all of this covered. Now for my fabric, it's not like I have a bunch just sitting around, but I did come across this little red polka dot swatch. For whatever reason, looking at this fabric, I immediately think of like the retro 50 swimsuits like the pinup girls wear. Oh, so cute. So I decided I wanted to do something like that and just cut the fabric to be the swimsuit. 
the idea of that just reminded me of dressing up my Barbies as a kid. And then I was like, yes, Barbie. I want to make a Barbie and dress her. I was inspired by the original 1959 swimsuit Barbie. Of course, our suit won't be the classic black and white stripes, but this is just the muse. She's our inspiration. I'm going to start with a very basic outline. Most of her details will come with the color portion. Now to get that fabric just right, I'm going to use my light board to create a few templates just by tracing the areas that will be swimsuit. Then I can cut out those shapes, lay them over my fabric, trace them as templates, and cut them out, which was one heck of a painstaking process. Thank goodness I have good sewing scissors. It ended up working out and pretty much all of the pieces fit great, except for the smaller of the two headbands. Uh, it was fraying like crazy. We'll just color that one in. But let's start by coloring Barbie herself. I kept her nice and pale as that classic Barbie was, made her the typical Barbie blonde, and colored those red accents. I also want to add the Barbie logo to the page at some point, so I went ahead and drew that out. This shade of red looks dark, but trust me, it lightens with Mod Podge, so don't worry. It will match. Now we can punch up the details with some colored pencils. She looks a heck of a lot better with her eyebrows. <laughs> Give her some blush and oh lord, that eyeshadow was fun to color. Thickened up that gorgeous 50s winged eyeliner. People knew how to do their makeup back then. And decided to outline the logo too. Don't know that it needed it, but I guess it didn't hurt. And now we can add our fabric. I basically just laid down a thin coat of Mod Podge where the swimsuit was gonna go, then laid the fabric piece on top of that to secure it. I repeated that for all of those little fabric clippings, then went through with another coat of Mod Podge over the top of the entire drawing to seal it in. This looks awesome. Now flipping back to the page, we need a background. I chose this fresh little aqua blue color. It makes me think of diving into a pool or maybe the blue sky that's at a beach. Either way, I'm channeling swim vibes. Skipped ahead a little here, but I added another piece of fabric to fancy up that prompt. Now let's glue Barbie in. Gorgeous. And yes, I glued her at an angle like this because it's like how I would hold my Barbie, kind of. Also, it fills the page better. Well, here's the finished page. I love this one too. We are on a roll this week. Classic Barbie is just as fabulous as it comes. Using the fabric was a fun challenge, and overall, I'm happy with both the process and the end result. Okay, I was so stoked for this prompt. Create an alien. Draw what you imagine an alien looks like. Try to think outside the box. No lie, if I wasn't completing this book in chronological order and just going through picking my favorites, this definitely would have been one of the first prompts I did. I had never really thought of drawing an alien, what that would look like for me, but suddenly I had so many ideas. I figured aliens can't be too different from us, so mine is definitely going to have some very humanoid characteristics. My alien is going to be female, of course, and as far as what makes her an alien, I gave her some spikes on her forehead, some creepy kind of slashed eyes, and two little slits for nostrils. Now, I love the idea of this alien kind of presenting with that alt-girl punk rock aesthetic. I love that. So I'm giving her stretched ears, a few facial piercings, and tattoos, even a little shaved side of her head. For her hair, I love the idea of a mullet, but made of tentacles. And this is my favorite part. She's come to Earth and made friends with a cute little kitty. Because if I was on another planet, the first thing I'd want to do is get acquainted with the precious wildlife there. She's rocking a classic t-shirt with the sleeves rolled up. Gotta show off those fun little elbow spikes. And hey, let's do a little tie front too with some jutting hip bones. And she's an alien, so gotta do the tricky hand. And this part just for fun, I want to give her a smiley face tee, but the smiley has three eyes because alien. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> She's going to be all tatted up, so I'm just going to scribble swirls here because I have not the energy to actually draw out a bunch of little tattoos. <laughs> and speaking of tattoos, I was loving this line work, thinking to myself, I would get this tattooed on myself today if I could. <laughs> Anyways, just adding some fine line details, loving that tentacle texture. Now let's lay down a few solid blacks here and there, and then it's time for color. 
I really debated making her a fun color like pink or purple, but I ultimately settled on green since that's how aliens are predominantly depicted in the media. I really wanted her to read as an alien straight away. I used watercolor for this part. I know that my markers tend to like fade or change color with time. And I was so in love with this. I wanted to stay exactly the way it was like forever. So watercolor, I'll put in the extra work. Once the base was done, I just went ahead and added a little darker green for some shading. Now for her t-shirt, I thought tie-dye would work with the smiley. And my mind went right back to the quote page. I mean, I loved it so much. Why not just basically do that all over again? Yes, looks great. I'm going to keep this little kitty white. I think he'll stand out a lot better that way. So just a couple of little gray shadows for him. And as my process goes, I follow up with the trusty colored pencils, adding the details, the textures, a few shadows, and a couple of soft highlights. I save the real highlighting for my juicy highlight pen. Ooh, yes, yeah, so satisfying. So I knew I was going to have to cut her out, and that would be a real pain. She's got a lot of little details. So I added a thick black border all around her so I wouldn't have to be as precise because the black border will blend right in with the black background. It's gonna be like an outer space scene. Nothing too crazy, no like galaxy this time, just black with some stars. I use this fun, almost neon green color to accent the word alien in the prompt and add a few planets and stars across the page. Then went through with white, yes, more stars, even a few little shooting stars, aww. And now to glue her in. Yes, I added this little sign to the other page. I did the quintessential alien, take me to your leader, but crossed out leader and changed it to cutest animals because yeah, that would be my request. So here's my finished alien spread. I love her so, so much. I can't even say, definitely my favorite of the week. Had oodles of fun creating her. I wanna be this girl's friend. And that brings us to the final prompt for this week. Create a challenge. Fill in this page without using your hands in any way. But no warning. I will be completing this prompt using my feet. If you are one of those people that is freaked out by feet, you can go ahead and skip to the end for the reveal. Here's a timestamp. Go now. If you're one of those people that's aroused by feet, hit me up. I'll sell you some foot pics. And if you're one of those people like me that's completely neutral about feet, let's go ahead and jump into the prompt. Okay, so the setup for this one was just me laying a poster board down to protect my floor. Then I taped my page down on it. This page did already have a space for the prompt cut out. I prepared. Then I needed a little foot bath so I could clean off the paint as I went. So I just filled this massive Tupperware with hot soapy water. And now for my paint. I've got some blues and some pinks. My inspiration for this page is this cute little cloud painting. I felt like the finger painting I did last week kind of prepared me for this. It had a lot of texture, so I thought maybe I could do clouds. I started off with the blue sky and immediately knew I was in for a rough go with this one. I hated the feeling of paint on my toes, and I feel like I have decent dexterity in my feet, but when it came to painting with them, no, almost no coordination. This was not going well. At least that foot bath was nice and warm, though. <laughs> Next, I started working on the pink. No lie, I should have let the blue dry first, but I had already mixed up my pinks and I was worried that if I waited for the blue to dry, then the pinks would dry out too. So I just went in for it. But the pink definitely mixed with the blue in some spots. So yeah, that was not fun to try and fix. I did try to dab the excess blue with paper towels so it would dry faster, but that just didn't do much. Here I started adding some lighter shades of pink, and for a fleeting moment, I thought to myself, hey, this doesn't look awful. Am I going to pull this off? But then I tried to add white, and this was where that blue decided it really wanted to start peeking through all of the colors. At this point, I was so annoyed, like, sure, this is fun, only not. I tried to dab some more, and that just pulled up a bunch of paint which I then tried to fill back in, but now I had lost the heart shape of the sky peeking through, so I had to go back in with more blue. This really just took me back to that insanity I felt with the finger painting, just going over and over the same spots, back and forth with different colors, trying to make it perfect when it just was not going to be. 
the paper was really starting to warp at this point and it was caked so thick with paint that it was cracking everywhere. I finally just reached a point where I had to say, you know what, I'm done. Ages later, it was dry and I glued it into the book. Yeah, don't love it. For a foot painting, yes, it could have been worse, but in comparison to literally anything else I've painted, it's just not good art. What a poopy way to end the week. But let's go ahead and recap. We created a page of quotes. Well, quote, just the one, but I love the rainbow splattered background. I really like the hourglass and I'm proud of myself for pushing to try and be a little deep on this one instead of just turning it into a joke which was my first instinct. We created a fabric page using this red polka dot scrap fabric to create a cute little vintage pinup swimsuit for the classic Barbie. I loved making this. It was actually really fun, different in a good way, not a stressful one. And it came out cute. We created an alien, a punk rock being from out of this world who came clear across the galaxy just to snuggle the kitties. <laughs> Oh, how I love my alien. I was so excited for this prompt and all I can say is it was worth the wait. Love her, love her, love her. And lastly, we ruined the strong run of this video when we created a challenge, painting this entire page with feet. And yes, it looks like a version of the painting that I was inspired by as if it were done with someone's feet. So I guess I met expectations on this one. <laughs> Like if you knew it was made with feet, you'd be like, okay, that makes sense. But if you didn't, well, another week down. Oh, come on. This thing won't stay closed now. Ha, gotcha. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye.